Hey, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Rich Sharp, and I'd like to welcome you to our weekly show. We call it Tournament Horse Racing. It's brought to you by Broke Guys Handicapping. Here's how it works. We've broken the racing calendar into four separate tournaments, and each tournament consists of approximately 10 racing days. We pick four races from each of those racing days, and we compete against each other for prizes. Actually, you can see some of the prizes are back over here. We have four horse players, and each player is going to make a mythical $2 win place bet in each of the four races that day, and then we just measure who wins the most money. Uh, the horse player with the highest, the most money after 10 weeks is the winner of that tournament. At the end of the year, we actually have four individual tournament winners. We've already had one. He's actually here coming up in a little bit. And at the end of the year, we also have one year-end champion. It's all just based on how much money you win. That's how the tournament works. And I'm going to go ahead and pause for a second here. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to our horse players tonight. I'm going to start off just a little bit to my south here. Uh, he is here on the West Coast. He is my neighbor to the south. He's also my good friend from Temecula, California, Joe English. How you doing, my friend? I'm well, Rich. How are you guys doing? How's everybody out there? Yeah, I'm kind of excited. It's Belmont, uh, Belmont Stakes Day, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish the cards had bigger and more competitive fields, but I guess we'll get to that later. It is what it is. I'm going to swing just a little bit to my north here. Uh, and again, uh, he is also out here on the West Coast. He is the newest member of our horse racing family. Um, he is, again, my friend and uh, my neighbor to the north. He lives in Menifee, California. Stephen Newsom, how are you? Doing good, Rich. I'm trying to do some uh, research. I was watching a couple of videos today. Um, oh, nice, nice. <laughs> Video replay stuff, Joe. Look out, man. No. Oh, boy. He's, too, he's, he's leaning back. He's just way too relaxed, though. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I had yeah, some whatever. Ketos, I had some ketos that Brian gave me earlier. So. Uh, I mean, what, so it wasn't videos of horses is what you're trying to say. No, no, it was it was. It was horse videos. It was, yeah. It was, it was other people shit or picking uh, horses. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're getting your information from other sources. I see. No, yeah. I already made my picks. I just wanted to see what they were saying. That's all. <laughs> sure. All right. all right. All right. Before I lose track of him, uh, and last but not least, certainly all the way out on the East Coast, he's in Staten Island, New York. I know he's actually been to the Belmont Stakes before because I got the pictures and I've seen him with him. Uh, it's my good friend, Ray Torado, and he lives, again, in Staten Island, New York. Ray, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. Um, this is um, my hometown, my race, and this is a um, – I wish it was, like Joe said, I wish it was a little better card, but you know what? It is what it is. Um, you got some good horses, um, upcoming horses, so I'm excited, you know. I won't be going because I try only go to for the triple crown because that's the ones I like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes. Yes, I'm spoiled. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead and rub it in the fact that huh? I've never seen a triple crown winner in Razor. They're like I've seen two like mm. in the last five years. You know what? For the prices they charge, I mean, this is like the ordinary day for me. So I, I, I'd rather pay my five bucks on Sunday and go. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> That's good. It is, it is um, again. The yeah. the show is brought to you by Broke Guys Handicapping. So just remember that. All right, folks. Just a reminder: Joe, Ray, Steve, and myself, we're all friends. Uh, we do the show for fun, and we try not to take ourselves too seriously. We are not a touting service. We are not recommending or selling our picks in these races. We're just horse players who love our sport, and we enjoy competing against each other for fun. And we hope you do as well. With that being said, we are going to head out to Belmont Park. That is located in Elmont, New York, as Ray gave away there. Not too far away. That's his hometown. Uh, it is just east of the New York City limits. And uh, as far as historical, it was opened on May the 4th, 1905. Uh, and again, I, I sometimes I get a little out of order here. I would be remiss if I didn't tell you what happened last week uh, on Broke Guys Handicap. And, and uh, even though the results actually looked pretty good for me, uh, one of the things that uh, I like to be, keep honest on these things is is uh, that really wasn't any credit to my handicapping skills. Whoa! That's, that's for darn sure. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, for those of you who do watch our show, for the 20 to 30 of you who are out there who are participating, uh, click on the like button. First of all, we appreciate it. Uh, and second of all, you may be able to call us and sit there and say, Ray and Rich did not have the six horse last week when we did this show. Uh, and that is because the six horse scratched in that particular race. And Ray and I both called it audible uh, via text message. And ironically enough, we both ended up on the exact same horse. I believe his name was Fame Feather. Uh, I don't know what Ray was playing, but I know I was playing the trainer jockey combination because that was like one of the two or three jockey trainer combinations that I knew at Evangeline Downs. And so, no, this was not any uh, product of great handicapping by me. This was literally picking uh, a trainer's name. Um, I also got uh, the winner in the the seventh race, which was the third leg of our pick four. Uh, and me and Joe uh, had the second place horse that was there in that eighth race at Evangeline Downs. I thought it was exciting to be at a new racetrack where we didn't know any of the trainer jockey combinations. And essentially we were a flying little blind. I actually started out by not even using the odds form that sometimes we do that on broke guys handicapping. So I started off by using the one that didn't have the odds on there. Um, I will take you over here to Ooh, look, at that, Ray. look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Boy. I don't know. I think maybe maybe you guys probably we're probably under like, a dollar downs now. I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> See, I told you every cent counts. If you will get that two forty <laughs> horse, take them because yep. <laughs> seventy yeah. cents. Huh? Sometimes it comes down to just seventy cents That's right, yeah. on tournament horse racing. So, uh, Stephen Ray with still a little bit of a cushion. I got into it. Thank God. Thank <laughs> you, no Evangeline Downs. <laughs> and we'll see if I've got anything to do here on Belmont Park Day. Uh, but let's go ahead and get out to Elmont, uh, New York. Uh, this is Belmont Park. Uh, we're starting in race number eight. We'll finish up in race number 11. Uh, they are going six furlongs on the turf. It's the Japer, or the Jiper, excuse me, Jiper Stakes. Grade one, purse is $400,000 for three-year-olds only. And your morning line favorite is in post number five. It's Arrest Me Red. He's trained by Wesley Ward and ridden by Irad Ortiz. Five to two on the Belmont Park morning line. And I don't normally do this on tournament horse racing, but trust me, there is a method to my madness, but uh, we're gonna go ahead. Oh, you know what, I'm sorry. I did change that up a little bit. We're gonna start with Steve, uh, who is in first place by, as you saw, 70 cents here mm -hmm. on the show. So go ahead and put the uh, first place guy out there. Steve, who do you like in the Jiper? Um, I'm going with the eight. Oh, I'm sorry, not the eight, the seven. Uh, what makes Sammy run? Flavian Pratt. Getting back on board this horse. He's ridden it three times before. Uh, one twice. So, kind of like, obviously, I like like Flavian Pratt. He's one of the best jockeys out there. And, uh, yeah, I just I just think this horse will have a have a nice, nice ride with him on board. No, I, I, I actually like this horse myself. Uh, comes over from the West Coast. So, this is that going west to east, started east, went to west, came back to east. Um, horses got a lot to like there. Um, I am actually up next, so uh, without further ado, I will tell you that I ended up on the four, and this is Casa Creed. He's got uh, some experience down there at Gulfstream Park, so that's where I kind of first saw him. He is a six-year-old. He's trained by Bill Mott. Uh, that's one of the best in the business. And you've got Luis Saez uh, riding him. They don't have much of a combination here, but I assure you, uh, they do ride together when they're down there at Coldstream Park because that's where Luis Saez is uh, one of the top jockeys. And you see here, uh, the horse has got a, a good string of races, uh, nice. including you know Belmont, Saratoga, Kentucky Downs, uh, at Del Mar, that's the Breeders' Cup mile uh, that the horse was involved in, finishes just three lengths off of the lead. And then this year, decided to go ahead and try for those big money races uh, February 26th, that first one there, that is the race that's in Saudi Arabia. I believe that's on the same day as that that Saudi $20 million race. Uh, and then, as you see there, stayed over seas and decided to go ahead and go to Maidan on on Dubai World Cup Day uh, and finishes fifth, but just two and a quarter lengths off the lead. So um, I thought coming back here, they always give you a sufficient amount of time off of that, uh, that Middle Eastern run. Uh, I have a lot of faith in Belmont. Uh, and Luis Saez, and I, I do have a, a kind of a soft spot for those Jimmy Creed sired horses as well. So I've got the four in the opening leg of our pick four, and that's going to have, have me handing it off to Joe. Okay, um, I'm a little bit further outside. As a matter of fact, all the way outside. Give me the 13 Gregorian Chanity to one. 
Uh, solid third fin third place finish behind the favorite of Rest Me Red uh, in the turf sprint at, at Churchill on uh, Oaks Day. And she switch he switches from an inside post. He obviously was down on the rail at the, and, and that start, and he gets an outside box uh, this time. So obviously not not should not be encumbered by traffic. Uh, should be able to pick when and what when he wants to go. Uh, Joel is obviously one of the best finishers in the business, and he gets an extra half furlong going from five and a half furlongs to six. Uh, I realize he was in the Jaipur last year, uh, and he was much closer to the pace than he usually was. That's probably because Saez was up, and he's much more aggressive generally than than a guy like Rosario is. So this guy's going to be coming from off the pace, and like I said, I, I think the extra half furlong will help with the best finisher. Uh, probably in the game. So I'll take 13 Gregorian chant with eight to, at eight to one with Joel Rosario. And I guess I'm handing it to Ray. Yes. Would uh, you correct? Wow. This is a big field. Um, if you're not on a favorite, I mean, you can pick anybody one of these horses. And this is a, I find it pretty much wide open. So I decided to go with the horses in good form. Number eight, Scuttlebuzz. Um, he's won three in a row. It's a big class, you know, test for him. Moving up, he's been running in allowance races and, you know, local train, Rudy Rodriguez says, what the hell, put him in there. You know, he probably, you know, it's a grade one, but, you know, I don't consider this, I mean, many of these horses grade one material, so. I think Scarborough might have a chance here. He he always runs runs well and at the end, and it'll probably be a good pace. And you know, second race off a layoff, Castellanos, you know, getting a little better, you know, with his mounts. And you know, he's been struggling early in the year, but he's um you know starting to pick up his game. But um, you know, he's been doing three in a row, and you know, six out of eight and the distance with two seconds. So. He likes the distance. He's been a good. He's a good horse. So you know he's, a, he's been hot lately. So let's say you know let's let's try give him the acid test and see if he can do well. You know at least come into the top two for me. So I'll go scuttle buzz. And to be honest, if I have another commitment, I would have made myself out there for the general mission just to you know sit on the grass and be in the paddock. But you know honestly. Yeah, I you actually know, kind of I wonder what a, kind of. I got another commitment, so. Yeah, I was wondering what kind of crowd they're gonna have out you there know, tomorrow. Yeah, you know, on, on I'll be done by two thirty, but at that time, I'm not driving out there. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's an hour away. So, you know. Well, it, honestly, though, you know, if, if, if no, but you could you. Well, I know, but sure. people might be settled in there. You I was know, gonna say, what's what time is the pick? What time does the pick four start? That's true. Yeah, yeah. So you could get there for the last four. <laughs> is it worth is it worth the aggravation? I get it. Yeah. And and since Joe did mention it, that actually started to pick four four. Yeah, but, uh, it's not it, an it, easy it, ride to get out there. So you gotta start early. So um that's why we get the phones and the mobile and the TV. So um another year. All right. Here we go. For me. We're we're on to we're on to one of the All big right. races of the day. One of the big races of the year, really, every year. Uh this is race number nine. They are going one mile on the main track. This is the Hillendale Metropolitan Handicap, or the Met Mile, if you like. Grade one, purse is a million dollars. Handicap for three-year-olds and upward, and your morning line favorite is right there. That's the Invader from California. Lightly raced flight line. He is trained by John Sadler and ridden by Flavian Pratt. It is a whopping three to five on the Belmont Park morning line. And believe it or not, I actually have to go first in this particular race. Um, and as much as my preferences for uh, California horses anywhere on the dirt in particular when they're going east and this one has just looked absolutely unbeatable I did decide to go ahead and go with the more regularly raced uh, speakers corner uh, who is a Godolphin horse and trained by Bill Mott and ridden by Junior Alvarado uh, they have a nice combination together they got a nice little 43 percent going on together um, as far as these two are concerned uh, the horse has won three in a row including the Carter uh, right there in New York at Aqueduct, and before that had run uh, two races fairly easily down there at Gulfstream Park during the championship meet this year, uh, and one second there at the Discovery, um, and then uh, before that, a another impressive win before stepping up, so it came out of the Pennsylvania Derby. Um, the horse is accomplished. Um, you're getting a little bit better price. You're getting all the way up to 
8 to 5 instead of 3 to 5. And we don't even know if flight line is going to go off uh, that well tomorrow. So I decided to go with the 2 here. Um, although, you know, flight line does look impressive. Uh, I am going to hand this one off to Joe. Yeah, I, I, and Ray, I wanted to ask you. I'm like, I, I don't know that I've ever seen a five horse field with a 50 to one morning line horse. Ray, have you ever seen anything like that before? <laughs> I, I, I swear I haven't. I know. I'm, yeah. like, I mean, I'm like, no, no way. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> and honestly, well, never mind. I'm not going to say anything about informative. Um, and being that I'm last in the standings, I'm not going to do any, anybody, anybody, anybody doing myself no good by picking flight line or speaker's corner. So I went with the four happy saver. He's undefeated in two one turn tries, albeit against much lesser. Uh, this is his second start of the year. And obviously he was a clear second behind a very good two turn horse in Olympiad in the Alishiba on Oaks day. And I think he's going to be. If, yeah. if for whatever reason the top two go at it, ding dong in it like affirmed in Alidar, and they back up at all, he's going to be the one who gets first run. He's going to be sitting right off the. He's going to be sitting in the garden spot right off the pace, so he might be the first one to get by them, and maybe the only one to get by if they both falter. I mean, heck, would it for racing? Would it be great to see those two go at it down down the stretch for sure? But. This is a tournament show, and and like I said, three to five or eight to five really isn't going to do me a hell of a lot of good being in last place. So give me the four happy saver for Fletcher and Irad. Right? Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, fly line looks amazing. It's three starts, unbelievable. But you know, there's a few knocks I have on him for this race. This race. Post one, I don't like them in post one. They tend to break badly, uh, especially Belmont. Uh, I've seen this before. And I just, I mean, for the price, I have to just, you know, try and beat him. Great horse, you know, if he wins, so be it. Put him up in Saratoga's Hall of Fame, whatever. <laughs> well, if you but, notice, in, if you, if you notice yeah. in every, in every yeah. race, he's got a diminishing, um, diminishing, you know, margin of victory. Yeah, yeah. So you know, Ray, you know, he's Ray's never been a mile. But, no, go ahead, keep going. <laughs> he's never been a mile, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go. Um, I went, you know what? I'm not even going for Speaker's Corner. He's a good horse too. I'm gonna go with number three, Aloha West. You know, Bridge mm-hmm. Come Sprint winner. Uh, you know, he hasn't raced a mile, but you know what? He hasn't tried a mile. So let's see what happens. He's a closer. If they go out there in 44, 108, and they're banging it out there. You know, he could be coming late, and I'll take my chance. You know, maybe he'll get the mile to, you know, to improve his um stallionship because, you know, he's very big. You know, he's very one in sprints. He's in, you know, sprinter, closer sprint, you know. Second race off the layoff, and, you know, I'll take a chance with Loha West. So, you know, I'm hoping the base, you know, the base falls apart. I did like Happy Sailor, too, so, you know, so um, he actually might get first run, so I'm going to have to beat him down the lane. But um, yeah, Aloha West for me. Yeah. Steve? Yeah, well, I like Aloha West if it's if it's an off track. Um, and there is a fifty percent chance of rain, thunderstorms. Okay. I um, that. However, I, I right now I'm going with flight line. But I am I am probably gonna bet that fifty one shot. <laughs> you gonna bet the fifty? <laughs> he will be eighty to one. So you yeah, have fifty to, to one shot. Yeah, yeah. He ran on an off track he, seven he, times he, in one he, place. He's gonna. He's yeah, be, I, honestly, I, I could. If it wasn't for stupid money, I could see him going at ninety nine. I could. I could see oh. him over a hundred. I really could. Wow. But be, I didn't, because, I don't, it, I because like of five, the rich I strike think. phenomenon, there's no yeah, way it's gonna happen. I, exactly. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no chance. But if he were ninety nine to one, it's not unwarranted. He he has very little shot to it. I mean, I he swear he only has three. To, he, to, to me, he's got three <laughs> legs compared to everybody else having four in this race. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the way it looks. <laughs> I think you said that about uh, about Rich Strike. Uh, and the, uh, and the other and the other thing about Ray was talking about Flightline earlier. 
based on social media, Flightline should already be in the Hall of Fame. So that's beside the point. That's what it sounds like, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> based on what I've seen on social media, he's he's you know he's Pegasus reincarnate. I mean, <laughs> um, all right, let's move along. Let's get to the tenth race, uh, and this one is going a mile and a quarter on the inner turf. The Resorts World Casino Manhattan Stakes. It's a grade one. The purse is $750,000. Uh, it is, again, on the inner turf for four-year-olds and upward. And your morning line favorite is in post number two. Seems to show up on this show quite a bit. Trained by Christopher Clement and ridden by Joel Rosario. Gufo is trained, is uh, three to one on the Belmont Park morning line. And Joe, you're going to lead us off. Yeah, it's funny trying to beat Chad Brown when he's got four, especially in the Philly in the Philly race. He had four today, and you know, obviously the one of the unfancied ones won. And he's got four in this race, and you're you're trying to beat him. This is a field of ten, if I recall, nine or ten, actually ten. Um, I went with a horse who. It's funny, the horse I like. I when I didn't know the odds before I I picked the horse, and then I saw the odds, and I was like. I don't know if I like him that much anymore, but I'm going with him anyway. I'm taking the nine centine. Uh, okay. He, he's got some tactical speed. I expect Tribavon to be on the engine and, and going. He's going to be on the lead. He was, I believe he won the Manhattan last year. Uh, if he didn't win it, he was, he might've been close second, but he's never taken a step backwards on the speed figure scale, at least the buyer speed figure scale. And my notes said he's. It's not likely that he would be favored. Now again, I I'm surprised that he's seven to two on the morning line, given all the Chad Brown runners. Um, but he's never gone ten furlongs. And like Chad said on on TV today, he's like you never really know whether they're going to get that extra furlong until they try. He doesn't seem like the horse to me who's going to just fold after nine. So I'm taking you know Tyler's hot at Churchill. And obviously he's he's along for the ride with this guy. Uh, again, I don't I don't like seven to two, and I'm hopeful that he drifts up to four four and a half maybe five to one, because of all the Chad Brown money that you'll see. So I went with the nine Santine again, not not liking the odds, but I, I like the horse. So Ray. Yeah, I'm on the same horse, for a different reason. Um, he's actually new to this group. And, you know, all these horses, they beat each other. They're six, seven, eight years old. Here's a little younger horse. He's been improving, trying to make his status. And why I picked him is because he won the Turf Classic at grade one. So, you know, and he, won, he came in second by a neck in the grade one. So I think he's got grade one, you know, material in him. And he's up and coming. And like you said, you get that extra, you know, furlong. Shouldn't be a problem, and you know, while all these horses just keep you know pouncing back and forth, he's an upcomer and he has a good record, and you know he deserves to be in this race. So that's why I picked him, Santin. You know, you know good for Brendan Walsh for giving him a chance to get up there, because and you know, of course, they often you know they always show up at a big day, so you know, they love to <laughs> <laughs> they love to come down to the, to the big events, you know, and have their thousands of people in the in the crowd so santin for me all right I'm, um so steve yeah yeah i think i'm up right yeah okay. I'm, I, I'm going with the with one of the other uh chad brown horses the six the uh, rock emperor i mean i don't know if we'll get 10 to 1 but as i read ortiz and chad brown yeah but the, the the horse has been uh, two one and two at Belmont, so it ran at Belmont a few times and has had eight starts. Turf three three four six and twenty one starts. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I think this horse will uh, do pretty well with the uh, Irad on board. I'm most positive it's the same ownership group as the one horse, and they both got the same sire, Holy Home and Empire. Mm. Uh, well, excuse me, Holy Roman Emperor, and I was tempted on that on that horse myself. I liked. I liked yeah, if he wins, I'm gonna kick myself because I liked him too. Um, yeah, I had, to, I had to make a choice, no? I get that coin flip. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I did like the first one as well. I did like yeah. uh, Le, 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 yeah. Le Imperator, mm. um, but I decided to go ahead and I settled on 
the other 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 Chad Brown horse. Uh, and this is the one that's got Flavian Pratt aboard. So uh, those two, you knew they were going to be a magic combination when Flavian went back east, and and nobody's disappointed by that. Thirty four percent together, um, and the horse is bred to run all day. He came over from Europe, has only won four out of thirteen lifetimes. So it's not like he's a superstar as far as winning, but he did start off his career. Uh, it looks like by winning his first or, or winning three in a row. Um, back early in his career when he was over there in France. Uh, came over here, finished second uh, down there at the fairgrounds just by a head in a race. Um, and then uh, third uh, behind Santine in that last race, which was the Turf Classic, is the same day as the Kentucky Derby. Uh, that's the big turf races there that day. Again, we're getting Chad Brown, we're getting Flavian Pratt, and we're getting a horse that's got a very good pedigree as far as the turf is concerned. Um, and I believe this is going to be my pick. So I've got the four. Nine, six, four. Good. All right, and we are on to the finale, which is also the feature. Uh, and uh, I always get a little sad when we come to this day. Uh, this is uh, the end of the Triple Crown Series for 2022. They are going a mile and a half on the dirt. It is the Belmont Stakes presented by Naira Betts, grade one. Purse is $1.5 million. It is for three-year-olds only. And your morning line favorite is right here in post number one. <laughs> the first three words of the Constitution, folks. We the people. <laughs> Trained by Rudy Brousset and ridden by Flavian Pratt. And he is two to one on the Belmont Park morning line. And I'm hoping you're going to see a method of my madness here in the way that I select them. But the man from New York gets the fresh page and tell us, Ray, who do you like in the Belmont Stakes? Well, I get down to two horses. I have to make a choice. So, um, I went, this is a pedigree play for me. I went with the three, Nest. And she's a filly, but she looks, she's a tough filly. And, you know, I love Colin, AP Indy Man. That's 12 furlongs for me. I mean, whether she's good enough, I mean, the speed figures, she's there. I mean, everybody's, you know, around the low hundreds, so she's gotten there. Winning the, I mean, coming second in the Oaks, you know, and Secret Ultras, you know. You no, know, good Philly, too. Yeah, I've heard. But, um, you know, <laughs> Nest, Plutcher, I mean, Plutcher wouldn't be if he didn't have, you know, have a chance to win, so. She gets five pounds, I like that. Um, you know, just hoping to follow the Wax to Riches story. But, you know, she deserves to be here, you know. Yeah. I I was torn between Mo Donegal. I liked him too. He was <laughs> unfortunately he was ten wide his last race. <laughs> he won't be ten wide here. I mean, but um, you know, there, I, there was a stat I yeah. saw that turned me off to Mo Donegal as far as the Belmont Stakes and and how mm -hmm. horses that come from kind of far off the pace do over the last thirty years. And I yeah, was like, yeah, oh, they that's... have trouble. Yeah, they... they certainly have trouble. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so but um, we got the Derby winner here. Not most people are talking about him, but um, he can go back to Ohio for me. I'm not on him okay. at all. So, all right, once not gonna be him again. So, all right, Steve, who you like in the Belmont? I'm on Nest. Yeah, well, you know, I, I mulled this one over, and I heard I heard something about that closing stuff uh, earlier earlier this evening when I was listen to one of these but uh it, i mean i was looking at mo donegal and i thought i was going to go mo donegal but you know what um i'm gonna go with rich strike i just i just i just think this horse has just been waiting to waiting to run these longer distances you know, once he got up to that mile and a quarter i don't know we'll see had some nice workouts over the, over the last few weeks I have a question for you, Steve. Do you think yeah. the the trainer made the right decision to skip the pick this, or you just, I think they, so. they should have pushed him? No, I think they the made the right crown, decision. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. He's probably a little more fresh now. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, 
even though I'm about 30 bucks behind, uh, again, we're doing this tournament for the entire year, so there is some uh, gamesmanship that might be going on where I'm not sure if I can quite catch Ray and Steve, although I should be able to. Um, I did not see this one uh, as an easy race to go ahead and, and try and defeat the chalk. That was a we we handicapped the Peter Pan uh, the Peter Pan Derby was part of this show uh, a few weeks ago. It was on the same day as the Man of War, uh, and that was the most impressive performance we saw on the day, and uh, it was it, it, it was eye popping what we saw there uh, from We the People, mm-hmm. uh, and he is of course by constitution, um, and has a great trainer, maybe the best jockey currently going on the planet, and. Uh, even though he's stuck down there in post number one, I believe he's got the kind of tactical speed that will allow him to get out of there. And I don't think the mile and a half is going to be any kind of a problem for the children of Constitution. So um, I went ahead and ate the chalk in this one. I'll go ahead and probably take home the $6 or whatever it is that we, we get when we bet that $2 mythical win place bet. And I just went with the one in this particular one. And I have bookended the Belmont Stakes with the two New Yorkers on our team. So, Joe, take us home. <laughs> Who do you like in the Belmont Stakes? All right. Well, I'll I'll give you a little odds update because I was I was actually kind of waving. Hopefully, I was figuring you might let me go just to give you an odds update. But as of five o'clock, well, that was about eight hours ago. Actually, maybe yeah, so maybe like five o'clock East Coast time. Uh, the favorite was Mo Donegal at two to one. Uh, Rich Strike was seven to two. Nest is four to one. And actually, we the people is way out there at nine to one, at least as of like I said, what? as of that as wow. of that point. Now I don't know how much money he was bet in the pool, but he was he was well out there. Anyway, not happening, but... um, maybe maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Uh, I guess the only time will tell. It's probably he probably my guess is it'll fall somewhere between the two to one morning line and the nine to one it currently is. Um, I'm with Rich, I'm with Steve. I'm on, I'm on Rich Strike. Um, I think I think they did the right thing by giving him the race off. Um, the five weeks in between is 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 probably what he normally does. Uh, at least I'm I'm talking about the trainer. And Gary Stevens is was glowing about about his workouts at at Churchill in between. And the, and I I just get the feeling. Yes, you see all the he's he's 18th, he's 11th, he's 11th. Somehow I get I'm guessing they're going to be a little bit more aggressive than they were in in those other earlier races and maybe he I don't know that he's going to be 18 lengths back. Uh I I just get the feeling yeah. that they're going to change the strategy just a little. Now will will that will he be good enough to win if he's closer to the pace? I mean, I guess maybe we'll find out, but I, I like I said I, I'm gonna give the give Rich Strike a little bit of respect. He's had time off. Uh, he obviously ran a bang up race in the Derby and and maybe like Steve was saying, maybe going longer distances is exactly what he wanted to do all along. And maybe maybe he's the one of those the longer the better. So you might see him. Where's the what's that two mile race at at Gulfstream, Rich? They run every year, like in the, in the spring. So if, if my guess is, if he comes back, maybe he'll run in that race. Is it is it the is it the Jerkins? Do they is it? I think the it's the, that might be it might be the Alan Jerkins. The, the, the two oh, mile yeah. race that they run yeah. in the championship meet at Gulf Shoot. So you might see him. We're gonna next one year. today in Belmont. Yeah. There's a two mile race today. You know what, Joe? You're the last one I thought would be on Rich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. Well. I mean, <laughs> yes, we yes we the people has the tactical advantage that yes he's going to be in front. I the, to me the, the 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 post one does is not really a big deal. He he's really the only one who's got any kind of gate speed, and if Fred's enough, yeah. smart he's going to go. And and he, I mean mm-hmm. unless like like a, unless it's a he gets a bad start, he's going to be in front. Yeah. The question is, can he go that far and and can Pratt rate him to the point where he's you know, twenty, you know, twenty-four and four, forty-nine and change to the half. Then he's got a real good chance to hold on. But there, there are a bunch of closers in this race. Really surprising for for a race that generally doesn't favor that style. Yeah, I'm a fair crowd minister. He might get first run. Uh, oh, he he will. Yeah. He will. That's a, they may, I, I think I think he and Nest will be they second and third in, in yeah. one one in some order, and then 
But like I said, I, I kind of think Rich Strike is going to be a little closer than – he's not going to be – I don't think he's going to be 18 lengths back. I doubt yeah. I, I, I can't see that. But Right. Okay. Take a look at your screens. Just make sure that I got everything correct there. 13494. Yep. Got me right. All right. 393. Let me come back to you. Yep. I'm good. All right. That was fun. Uh, again, I, I always get a little sad at the end of the Triple Crown. That's a that's a fun part of the year, every year for all of us. Uh, really kind of what horse racing is all about. No, though... the next few weeks is like... <laughs> Rich, what, what was the... What's, go back to the schedule. What's next week? Yes, um, so that... sure, sure Emzo for the next month. Because I know you showed the schedule. Be, uh, oh, Monmouth. Monmouth. Okay. okay. Monmouth, and then we'll finish up with Monmouth, Belmont. Monmouth, then back to Belmont. And Churchill Downs. Churchill, okay. Cool. Okay, everybody. Well, that's going to do it for our show tonight. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Rich Sharp. Uh, for Joe English, Steve Newsom, and Ray Toronto, uh, good luck and good night, everybody. Thanks. Right. Good night. Good night. Have a good Belmont. Happy Belmont, yeah. <laughs>